So next up, we have a presentation from Galan Lithium with the ticker code GLN, a company advancing towards production of its lithium brine project in Argentina. To tell us more, today we are joined by Managing Director, JP Vigaris de la Vega. Hi, JP. Okay, man. Thanks. Um, well, good morning from Perth. Um, thanks to all shareholders and, and people that are allowed to understand and know a bit more about Galan. And if we can start with the presentation and get onto it, uh, it's, um, it's, it's an exciting story to, to tell, Jane. And, and um, we are an advanced lithium developer. Um, we have just recently, last week, got granted permits to start the construction, the full construction of our phase one development in Argentina. We are located at the salt flat of Ombro Muerto, so our neighbours are Liven, Posco and Olkem. And importantly, um, if you have a, a quick look at, the, at that picture, we you can see our demo plant that uh, is producing around five um, kilotons of uh, lithium carbonate equivalent in lithium concentrate. We have a full camp now approved for 200 people uh, all up. Now it's going to be 250 people. So we're already in cater to start our commencing of a pond construction uh, within the next uh, week or so. So it's, um, it's all... Um, tools from there can start developing these. And as I said, the, the, the heading sets, our view is to become a producer on the first half of uh, the calendar year 2025. So in other words, in a bit more than 18 months, we should be generating cash flow. We should be generating lithium chloride concentrate, and we should be one of the next lithium producers in Argentina. We want to walk before we run. We're doing this on a step-by-step. I'm the company founder and managing director of this company. I've been taking almost six years to get to this point, COVID included. And I think that our the way that we have done things, it's uh, still in a rapid way compared to um, our peers and who else is, is in Argentina. And we do doing lithium chloride concentrate because we're taking the best what has been done in Australia. We want to apply that in Argentina. So, so where are we? As I mentioned, our neighbors are Posco, Live and, and, and Olkin, but uh, Argentina is um, it's also um, busy today with developing um, brine projects by the likes of Lithium Americas, Rio Tinto, Aramed. Uh, you also go Ganfeng. You've got Sinjin to the south that have been mentioned on the development and, and, the, and the neighbors that we mentioned. So we are in a part of the world that is a lot of interest and a lot of investment been happening um, in the last few years. And despite the um, all the noise that Argentina is generating, there is a strong commitment to get this done and get it over the line. Why Galan? And uh, Galan offers a, a low risk and rapid uh, um, project delivery. And this is something that we have been able to achieve on a step-by-step -step, um, approach. And we have been able to um, not only generate a fantastic project, but uh, it's, it's got all the necessary ingredients to develop and to become a, a producer. Those are a large resource. Today, we have a combined resource of 7.3 million tons of lithium carbon equivalent. So for the Australian audience, that's as big as, as um, Lion Town resources. Uh, it's bigger today was being declared by Olkem at Sal de Vida, which is on the same salt flat. So our resource is significantly large and importantly, it has the highest grade of any project being declared in Argentina. So we um, also can execute this project because our the team that we have behind Galan is a, a team that can actually execute this because we have in our ranks several ex-SQM um, board members, uh, we got uh, project managers, we got uh, chemical engineers, we got hydrogeologists, we got people that have been then doing this in and out with them um, within our um, Chile, and some of them have got more than three decades experience. So they're all betting on Galan because they can see the strength and how much this project can grow, and I'll be explaining the four stages of development that we have today. So we um. We have been able to tick several boxes and including the uh, uh, a strong commitment with the community and the government. As a reflection of that, we have been granted uh, permits for phase one development. And, and importantly for uh, our audience is that uh, we are gonna start uh, our construction very, very soon. So it's, it's all exciting. We have enough funds to kick this off. And this is an important thing because we want to take advantage of this uh, second half of the year big one because we want to start um, evaporating our brine and start concentrating during summer. 
So a snapshot about our company, we um, um, entirely hold um, with um, 346 million shares on issue. Directors and management have got 10% of the company. As July 31st, we have $45 million in the bank. So as I mentioned, we have enough funds to get the company to kick off these activities, this construction of bonds, and importantly, become uh, in cash flow production in the first half, half of 2025. Now, as I referred before, our neighbor Bosco Live and, and all came that this is a map of where we are and where we're sitting. And we have enough lithium today to demonstrate that we have a, a, a pathway to a 60,000 ton long term development that it could be uh, reached in 2030. But we believe that we can accelerate this. We're working on this first. We have four phases of development. And again, we want to walk before we run, keep it simple, start with a small project, and I will go into uh, the phase one in, in the next uh, few slides. Um, so this is the big picture about the development of Kalan and where we at and where we're going. So phase one, we got the permits, we done a DFS, we have a reserve for 40 years, my life, and we're gonna start executing. What are we producing? We're producing lithium chloride concentrate, and why are we producing lithium chloride concentrate? It's because in Argentina, as you see on the lithium triangle, there will be by 25 or 2026, approximately 11 lithium carbonate projects operating in Argentina. So we don't want to be lithium carbonate number 12. So we can apply what we've seen in, in Australia, that all producers are producing lithium concentrate and sell that as lithium uh, concentrate to, to the vendors in China. We're not doing it in China, we're doing that directly in Argentina. So, and uh, I've been asked this question, where are we with um, offtakes and where are we with funding? Uh, what I can say is that we are in discussions uh, with several parties at this stage Importantly, we're giving samples from the first picture that you saw of the demo plant. We engage in our um, companies here in within Argentina, and we are with a view that before the end of the year, we should have something meaningful as an offtake, a binding offtake for the production of Anglan. It's not going to be a non-binding, and that's why we've been always avoiding avoiding the non-binding deals. A binding one is going to come up. So, with that said. The second phase is immediately happening. And um, why I can say this is because um, the discussion with the Catamarca government has indicated that they want to help us to work with us to execute phase two without stopping uh, at phase one. So this should be a transition from phase one to phase two. We're currently doing a DFS and the DFS of phase, phase two should be um, come to market by the end of September. Phase three and four um, are later on down, down the track, and, and that's bulk of our production. But uh, as I mentioned, we walk before we run. We want to get this right. We want to get to phase two as soon as we can. And this is where our, our aim is uh, currently today. So uh, the company, as it stands, it's um, from the um, execution point of view and from the production point of view and from the a human factor point of view and, and all the other areas that you can look into is being severely the risk step by step. The only two ticks that we're missing is offtake and funding. And we are working hard on that. We're going to be putting something in, in, into the market as soon as we have news on that. But um, the having the, the biggest, uh, well, the highest grade lithium project and ticking all the boxes in terms of testing that we've done and evaporation and reaching the 6% concentrate that we mentioned that we'll be producing, which is today is a premium uh, concentrate pr product, by the way, which is more than double of uh, any lithium um, by lithium content. It doubles the content of uh, lithium uh, spodumene that is produced in, in here in Australia. So we are going to get to market. We start in small 5,400 tons of lithium carbon equivalent attracts a capex of around $100 million. So we're now going to the market with a larger product uh, uh, um, project that we want to be breaking the bank, trying to execute something, because we lend to what's happened in the past um, in the lithium triangle with other companies that want to start big and they couldn't raise money. So just want to get on with it, start finance um, with our own cash flow, the phase two and the other phases coming up. So, as I mentioned, uh, 5,400 is our rate of production for phase one. We already are fully catered to, to execute this by the uh, camp that we have at Ombra Marto West. We also have a camp at Candeles that can support any other activities that we need 
and um, embed um, people that are required as we are produce, uh, constructing them, then we will be producing. So we can execute um, solidly in what we have. We have the infrastructure, we have the logistics, we've done this on, on, on a way that we have demonstrated that we can grow. Now, we are going to start uh, construction of phase uh, one, as I mentioned, and we want to be, start operating. The aim is to start operating this summer. So uh, we're going to be informing them, the market, as soon as we uh, finish our first pond and start filling that with branches start the operation process. So um, the metrics about um, phase one. Phase one, don't forget, this is the smallest step that we're taking. And yet the, the valuation that we've done with the MPV and on on phase one, it came out with our $460 million US. We have a free, free cash flow of uh, more than $50 million a year. So this is just the beginning. Phase two is three times the phase one. So, and then phase two is, so phase three is the same as phase one and two combined. And phase four, it's um, equally as big as phase three. So I just want to give you an indication of how big this can grow. And this is where we want to take the company. And this is why, we have people with several years of experience that are working with Galan directly to get this company to into development. We don't want to sell. We want to develop. We're going to have an offtake. We're going to have funding. We're going to have everything that we need to grow this company and replicate the success that Oro Cobra has in the past and success that um, the Liven has in the past and, and the old Galaxy had in, in Argentina. So um, it's um, this is a, just a token of where we're starting. So importantly, our, as I was mentioning, our board has um, two XSKM uh, executives. Uh, one of them is Daniel Jimenez, that was the senior ex, um, ex senior VP of commercial and exploration for SQM, 28 years experience. And it's been a, a key fundamental part of Galan. Daniel joined us when we were uh, just a $25 million company and it's been growing all along ever since we started. Importantly, we joined, we joined by Claudia, and Claudia is part of the Ad Infinitum work, uh, team. Ad Infinitum has been um, a key part of all the development that we're doing. That demo plant has been designed by Ad Infinitum. All the chemical route of evaporation and concentration has been designed by Ad Infinitum. And importantly, we have people with experience to execute on this. So the name of Juan Carlos Barrera is a very important, I would like to highlight this, this because Juan Carlos was the ex senior VP of operations of SQM. He had more than 5,000 people under his um, wing. He was responsible for developing SQM from 40,000 tons to 120,000 tons. And uh, Juan Carlos worked 28 years at SQM, executing projects, studying projects, developing projects, and he's with us. So the importance of Having this team that it can execute is, is fantastic. And not only that, all the medium ranks and everything that it needs to be filled and the expertise that is required in Brian comes from Chile. And we are using the people that we know within the lithium industry to develop Galan. So just to round up, why Galan? Uh, there's a, a strong human factor here. We have strong community relationships with the community and the government. We wouldn't get permits if we don't have that. We will not achieve those. So we are very hands-on to develop this and to hire local people. And we've done this uh, fantastically because we got permits for phase one within eight to nine months. We're going to get uh, phase two permits within the next 10 months. So that's a reflection on the hard work that we've done with the Catamarca team, with the Catamarca office that we've done in Argentina. And they've done fantastically to, to achieve this milestone. So. We got experience to execute this, and at many levels, uh, we have most of the people that we have today working for Galan, and they are relevant, they got lithium experience. It's uh, probably one of the strongest lithium teams that's been assembled by a junior company, and it could be easily operating for one of the majors. And lastly, we have the best lithium project in Argentina with high-grade low impurities. Commercially, we're going to answer the question about um, offtake and the likes, as well as funding, and we're moving forward. Cash flow within 18 months, uh, or there, therefore. And um, we're going to be turning this corner around. And despite the current environment where we are, we're going to be showing to the market that we can be a lithium producer. And um, please watch this space. And with that, um, I end my presentation. Thanks, uh, Jane. Thank you, JP. That was a great presentation. So we've got lots of questions. I'll jump into them. Sure. Uh, so the presidential election campaign is becoming interesting mm -hmm. with the right-wing candidate being unexpectedly pre-selected. So yes. 
what would the impact on mining be should he win the election? Well, one of the key things that he's been saying, this uh, right-wing uh, candidate, is that he's going to dollarize Argentina. It's not the first time that it's been done in Argentina. And, and, and if you are in Argentina, go to go there, the country is half away or three quarters of the way being dollarized. So I don't think it's going to be a big shock if he becomes a, a president to do and to make these big changes, it's a big news in in Argentina. But um, I am, um, I would like to think that, given that he's an economist by background and by trade as well, it's um, I, I believe that these um, uh, you know, new 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 um, new policies policies that he wants to implement has some ground and makes some sense uh, at some level. It's very radical, yes, because it hasn't been done in Argentina. This is all brand new. But some of the things that they, they, they want to do, it seems, on the other hand, like business as usual in Australia. So it's, um, it's if you apply Australia to, to Argentina, you'll have candidates like the one that just came out. Look, I am yet to be seen, but I, it's, um, I think that the, the, this candidate deserves um, a go as well. Thank you, JP. Another one. So can you please provide an update on interest from majors and or off-take partners? Um, as I mentioned in my presentation a few times, there is interest. We are delivering samples to, to um, the participants within Argentina. And that's a critical thing because without sample, you cannot have conversation about off-takes. We're doing that. We're delivering the samples. And, um, and that is opening the doors. This, what I can say is that no one has come back and said, oh, that's a horrible idea. Uh, don't send me any samples. It's on the contrary. So like, look, this is some, sounds like a, a good plan. Uh, let's talk and uh, please send us some samples. So this is advancing. We're keeping the market uh, informed in due course, and, uh, but uh, the, the, the conversations are, are in place. Thanks, JP. This one's come through a few times. So what options are you currently looking at for funding in terms of debt and, and financing? We're looking at non-dilutive solutions. So prepayment, um, debt as well. So anything that uh, it doesn't, we avoid um, touching the equity market. Wonderful. And how confident are you in obtaining export permits for lithium chloride? Well, that's a second leg on things. And importantly, in the last election, the Catamarca government uh, got re-elected. So the governor got re-elected. So he's got another four years um, to serve. And they'll continue with the same minister. So everything is going to continue as it started. So this, so four, four years is sticking from last Sunday. And, um, and this is great for us because we developed the relationship that means the permits for phase two and the likes going forward are very likely to succeed. And importantly, the um, opportunity to get permits for export, um, I believe that we got a chance because we are going to be um, trying to negotiate uh, royalties in a similar way that Australia does for the concentrate um, sales. Wonderful. Oh, well, oh, JP, sorry, rather that's all we've got time for today, but I want to thank you for joining us on Broker Briefing. Well, thank you very much, Jane.